All right, we're going to do a quick little video on how to make a quick beat with ORAC 2.0. Um, there's many different ways that you can use ORAC 2.0. This is just a quick way demonstrating uh, how you can use it. So first of all, we need to go to this one clock. And I already have it set in, but just so you can see it, you want to download sequence BPM. And um, that's going to give you a subfolder to normally the clock is right here. You don't want to do that one. You want to go to sequence BPM when you download that and then throw the clock in there. So that's going to make all these other modules work within that clock. Otherwise, the other ones are a little harder to time. You can do the sequence ones there on time, but um, I'll show you how this works a little better with uh, sequence is one of the sequencers I use. Um, for So we got that one there. So you should be familiar with these chains, these chains, and then these. So usually I start off with drums on this one. So I have poly beats on there, but then right after that you need to have some sort of drums. So I have sam my sampler 24 one shot in there. And then if I play it right now, you can hear the drums. And then on this chain, this would be the next one. I have sequencer going with analog, so this is usually my bass line. On the third one I have a sequencer going, and also I have this hooked up to my Yamaha Reface CP. I'm using it both as a MIDI controller right now, I got it hooked up USB um, to the Organelle M, but I also am using it for audio right now I have the volume down so all you'll hear is I'm playing the Yamaha there same thing as this but um, later I'll add like the audio I'm going through a mixer right now you can play the audio from the Yamaha reface into this one the way you'd want to do that is go to your uh, audio chain and um, so any I usually use chain three you want to turn the audio up so now if I go turn the volume up I'll go to one of these so that's without it there so I'm gonna go back to that one and also the way you set the MIDI up is you go to channel three MIDI it's on if you had if you have them off, you're not gonna be able to play any of the MIDI keyboards you have plugged into it but this one I only have if you have it set so you can set channel 1 2 and 3 MIDI on or off I usually just leave it on the third one I usually sequence this one I sequence this one with poly beats and then this one I just kind of play on top of it so a lot of times I, I like to use a MIDI controller with more with bigger keys with the velocity sensitivity to play that also, in this one, I'm just going to play the audio over it. Like I said, you can plug directly into the audio input, turn the, the channel 3 gain up. I have it to 40. You don't want to turn it up too loud. It gets, gets loud pretty quickly, but I have that set to that. So let's go to Polybeats. The way Polybeats works, um, the best way I would explain it is like a grid of 16, and it works the opposite, where 16th are 1, 2 is 8th notes, 3 is still triplets, four would be quarter notes so if you want to make let's make a simple house beat let's make the kick on the first and and the third beat so you want to do a number division of eight so then as soon as you press one this is my kick this is going to be my hi-hat this is my snare i have another hat so let's start off oh yeah you want to understand the velocity kick i usually have it up pretty high i have it at 127 so then as soon as I press that, the kick comes in on the down beats. One. And you can see that it's on tempo. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to turn the velocity down a little bit. And now we're going to do the snare on the off beat. There it is. And now let's turn it down a lot for the hi-hats. And I'm going to do triplets for this one. This ends up being kind of a cool beat. And I like to do 16th, which is 1. Turn this down a lot. This is what 16th 
theme song that sounds like. Pretty simple little beat. Now we'll go to this one. This one is sequencer, so however I play this, it's going to play it back. This is, let's consider this a looper, and whatever I play is in a loop, and this is my looping button. So we'll just do something simple, we'll just keep it on the black keys. And as soon as I start playing, it starts recording, and I want to stop, as long as I stop close to it, it'll, it'll quantize it, we'll say. So wait for the beat to come in. going to take when as soon as you stop that that's going to erase your track as far as i know um sequence stays saved and then this one i like to a lot of times i like to use punchy punchy is fun also um you can do some cool arpeggiated best ba bass parts with that uh, just for this example i just kind of showed you sequence on both of these it's kind of like a looper um yeah, if you have any other questions, I guess, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, this is a simplified version on how to use ORAC 2.0 to make a quick beat. Um, hopefully this gives you a good idea. Not the best tutorial, but maybe it gives you a rough idea on how to get started using with ORAC. I know when I first got started with ORAC, it was kind of overwhelming. I didn't know how to use it. But once people show you where to put the modules and all these other things, the sequence BPM clock up there has been... Uh, huge for me because for a while I couldn't figure out how to get everything on time and then the th the three main sequencers that I use punchy poly beats and just sequencer like it's like a looper those are all quantized when you throw that sequence BPM clock on there but you have to download that and throw that in there and replace the original utility clock that comes with it but like I said if you have any questions uh, ask me in the comments or message me. I'll see if I can help you. I'm not an expert at this, but these are things I've learned as I've experimented with this. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Thanks.